Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I wanted to talk about a docker container called Watchtower. Now Watchtower is a docker container that pretty much scans other docker containers that you have running on your host machine and it will just check to see if any of them um, have newer updated container images and then it will pull that new image, shut down your running container and update it with a new one. Now this is generally like uh, i'm kind of sitting on two sides of here like it's great that um it does this and it will just update them willy-nilly um but i guess there's a couple of things to be careful about is that if it just updates it um it could blow away um something that you needed on a specific version or whatever so there's a few caveats here um with this that i just want to say straight away is that this is really cool and i'm going to demonstrate how it all works um, but you just have to be mindful when things have just been automatically updated uh, that you're doing things the proper way. And we'll kind of cover some of those uh, as we go. Um, and also, if I miss anything, feel free to leave a comment uh, below uh, and yeah, we can um, talk about it as well, any other things that we might have to be aware of. But let's jump into it and we'll have a play around and talk about what Watchtower does. So I'm on the Watchtower's main uh, website here. And as you can see here, it's really easy to get started. So uh, they've just given us a quick start command here to be able to run this. And we can kind of have a uh, quick look at this command. So you can see that it's just running. Um, it's going to run it in detach mode, which means it can run in the background. We're naming it Watchtower and we're um, doing a bit of a mount here. So you can see that it's using docker.soc. So this is mounting uh, Watchtower to the Docker daemon, if I believe, which then allows it to talk to all the other Docker containers um, on that host. So that's how it's doing the communication and being able to run those commands and stuff like that because it's linked straight into the Docker daemon. Um, daemon? Daemon? I don't know how you pronounce it, but D-A-E-M-O-N, daemon? Yeah. Anyway. Um, and then it's grabbing the container watchtower um, image. So, and I've also given you a compose if you would like to do compose as well. Uh, but yeah, so I've already got this up and running on one of my Raspberry Pis and we can show this now. So this is my Portainer instance and I have a few things running. So if we go into my environment, um, I've got my Raspberry Pi, I've got my Alzum and I have a cluster that's running on my Alzum, uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so it's in the Raspberry Pi we were running this. Also, if you're interested in Portainer, I'll leave a thing somewhere uh, where you can see uh, me install it and playing around with it. Um, so we'll go into the Raspberry Pi and we'll go into containers and we can see that we have Watchtower up and running. So I just ran one of those commands before and I'll, I'll run this exact same process uh, on another host so you can see it all up and running. Um, but you can see here it's all running. And if we go into Watchtower and we go and look at the logs, what we can see here is that it ran, and I, I actually set a command, so rather, instead of running every 24 hours, it's running every 30 seconds. It's a bit overkill, but just for the sake of this video, I wanted to demonstrate it. So um, you can see it ran, and then when it first started running, it found new images for my containers, right? And then what it did, what, uh, it started stopping those containers, and created them with the new image, right? Now this is all really well and good, um, providing, because it starts your containers up using the exact same configuration, right, that you had before. But if you were to shut down a container and you weren't using volumes or anything like that, everything on that container is now gone, right? So you have to be very careful that you have to know that if it's going, if you're gonna use this and you're gonna use it system-wide, because you can, you have Watchtower specifically look at certain containers and not others. But in this case, if you wanted it to just shut things down, make sure you're using volumes and that you can just shut down containers and stuff. This is how you should be using containers anyways. But if you're not, this is a good time to make sure you start using volumes and making sure that you can just shut down containers. Because ideally, you should be able to. Your containers should be short-lived, blow them away. It's the configuration and your volumes that really define your solution. So anyway. You can see that's what's happening here. And this is the thing I just wanted to make sure you knew about. So you can see then it's created all my um, new Docker containers with the new versions. And you can see it scanned seven and it updated five. So it didn't update the Portainer agent, uh, which makes sense. And it didn't update the, the Watchtower. Maybe because I'm running the latest Portainer image as well. Um, 
why it didn't update, but that's all cool. So we can see it's updated a select few and left the others. Uh, but yeah, that's all good. So let's have a look at playing with this again, right? So if we go to my dash, uh, my home page here, we're going to use it here. So I've got ours in Docker, which is my other server that I have. And this is running um, a Bookstack instance, right? So what we'll do is let's, I'm going to connect into the server. I could create the container uh, via Portainer, but I'm just going to show you creating it from scratch uh, by directly connecting to uh, my server, right? So I'm just connecting to my server and we're in it. So what we're going to do is we go, we'll go to Watchtower and I'll grab that exact same command that it showed. Right, so we've pasted that command in. So what I'm going to do now is actually add a um, argument here um, called, sorry, interval. Um, and that will be 30. So this scans every 30 seconds rather than the 24 hours because I want to be able to see this uh, live, right? So we'll run that and it's going to pull that image. And if we go to our containers, we can see Watchtower has just spun up. So let's jump there. Let's check the logs. And we can see that it's going to perform um, its task in 29 seconds. And there you can go. So it's found a new image now of the book stack. So I'm assuming it's going to just check the other containers first, pull down that image, and then it'll shut down the book stack. And remember, I'm using a database and everything here. So ideally, since it's using all the configuration of my database and everything, and I'm using volumes, it's going to recreate those, and I should be able to hit my book stack straight away, right? Um, and I shouldn't have lost any data. This is why backups and stuff are important. Right, so you can see it's done. Uh, it's done the, uh, it's failed zero, scan five, and it's updated two. So it's just done the book stack. So I should actually be able to access my book stack now. Right, after that intermission, I now have book stack up and running. We can see it here, which is awesome. Um, it was just a configuration issue on my side, it had nothing to do with uh, what Watchtower was doing. But now you can see, that's pretty much the general gist. We install Watchtower, Watchtower plugs into the daemon of Docker, and then it can uh, scan what containers you're running, pull down the container image, the latest version, and then it will stop and re restart uh, your containers with the new version of that image that they are using, and away you go. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You can see there, though, how my book stack went down because of a bit of a configuration shift that happened. So if you're running production stuff, you know, even if you just need to quickly change your configuration, that's still a bit of downtime that you have on production workloads. So having your containers just come down and then up again, even though it happens so quickly, but you're getting a new version of an image could cause problems. So I really wouldn't suggest having Watchtower running actively and changing containers uh, every time a new one comes out without you first maybe testing it in a dedicated environment first. Um, or just to read the notes of what's changed, yeah. But if you're just running it in like an environment where it doesn't really bother you too much, then that's fine. Or even running Watchtower in like that read only, so it's, it's pulling down the container images, but it's not updating yours straight away. Um, that could all be uh, relevant as well. Uh, you could even have alerts using Watchtower to check if there's a new image and let you know. Uh, they have all the plugins and stuff for that as well. So you could just use it as an alert. Like, hey, look, new image out, uh, update it when you can. So a lot of, lot of ways you can use this. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's the video. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.